And then Steve, I want to come out here and then I want to ask you a question about your, uh, what you got, what's going on here, and then I want to talk about your maintenance routine here. These tanks all look real sharp. What do, what do we got going in here? We got some, uh, this some is, little Tetras. Yeah, this is uh, mostly Asian except for the corridors. Uh, this is my nano tank. I even have it labeled as a nano. Oh, clearly it's a nano, yeah. What, 45 gallon nano? Uh, 72. 72? Okay. Yeah. I don't like little tanks, as I mentioned. Yeah. I've um, got uh, Raspora Hets. There's another Raspora type called Pectinocypris, or just long, skinny, uh, basically silverfish. Uh, and I've got uh, uh, Tetrazona barbs in there, Pentazona barbs in there. Pentazona? And then uh, sorted shrimp. I like Mirabak tanks. It makes the tank look deeper. It, it's kind of a force multiplier for schools. The only problem is the schooling fish tend to stay closer to the mirror because that's where, that's the, school. where the rest of the fish are. Huh. So uh, they don't always come out that much. It's not that easy to see them. The tank's a little over over planted, but uh, everybody's happy in there. I've got a mono shrimp. I've got some small uh, so all the cherries and just some various miscellaneous uh, assorted small shrimp. Yeah, these are cool. The, like they hang out on that what is it called Swasser tang or what's the yeah. mm -hmm. and you guys have that all over your uh, your club Let's yeah see. that makes the round some this is uh, I didn't uh, intentionally buy that I think it must have come in on another plant and it just kind of took up residence there's driftwood under both of those globs of that stuff oh. and there'll be little patches that float around I'll, I'll usually take it out to keep it taking over the tank but it's pretty good about it once it, it starts sticking to something it just grows in place Nice. Now, Steve, I gotta ask you. You got all these tanks. It's all about making it easy. How do you do maintenance on these? Like, what is your routine? I know you've got canisters and hang on backs. Like, what's what's your kind of style with filtering and then maintenance? Uh, I do uh, fifty percent water change every two weeks. Uh, everybody, some people say, old oh, little fish. That's no. too radical. Uh, I have really good tap water here. I'm lucky. The place I lived at fifteen years ago, the water wasn't so good. Uh, but I do 50% water change. If I'm running behind, if it's three weeks, I'll do a 70% water change. Okay. And a lot of people think that's progressive, but it just I, that's my routine. I've done it for years, and, and uh, everybody seems all the better for it. Uh, I don't use uh, sponge filters or air mainly because I don't have little tanks. Uh, I like the idea of power filters because when you clean the power filter, this is you can tell this is stuff coming out of the tank instead of getting trapped in a sponge or down in the gravel or whatever. Uh, big tanks use uh, uh, canisters. I've got on this one, I've got a uh, Flugel FX6, effectively a shop back. Yeah, we like those. <laughs> I just I love the big uh, canister filters. I've got that on all the big tanks. Um, and water then, changes. Yeah, I was gonna say, it's got, it's got to be easy to do. You've got, you've got some, some pieces and parts over here. Uh, show me. This is something I got from Jimco. Ah, Gary was up, showing me one of these. New Jersey. Uh, this sits down in the tank. I run a hose from here right into the shower drain or floor drain in the utility room. What's great about this arm is it articulates. So this is 50% on this tank. Yeah, I like that. This is 50% on this tank. If I've got a small tank, you can move so it up. You can set this down, and when the water level gets to this level it breaks the siphon so you know exactly how much water you're taking out. I added the shutoff valve so I just shut the valve off and moved to the next tank and basically just pick up the hose a little bit and restart your siphon and I just work my way around the room. That's a real easy way to, to uh, take water out and know exactly how much you're taking out. And then on your refill, we were talking about this at dinner last night, how do you uh, you put you put your water back in? You have a, oh. This is something, a uh, guy up in Colorado I think this was originally for a stock tank, horse water cross, and things like that that he's modified to fit on a tank. And basically this hooks over the front of the tank. I run a hose to my sink, which is uh, basically where I've got hot and cold and I just adjust the water the way I want it. I've got a quick disconnect hose. And so this fits on the tank. It's got a little aerator diverter, which tends to kind of uh, aerate the water as it comes in, decass in a little bit. And as the tank fills up, this float rises up and when it gets to the top it shuts the water off yeah you, so you don't overflow your tank wow so then i just shut it off move it to the next tank and open it up again wow i gave myself about a two tank head start with the other with the drainer and come back around behind wow it. so that kills it right there yep. shuts it off it takes a couple hours you know it takes several hours to do i've got 11 or 1200 gallons worth of water so 
and I don't do everything in one day just because I don't have why, yeah, why go through the uh, that uh, I don't have enough water pressure flow. I'm not in a big hurry to do that. And in the wintertime, I don't want to outrun my hot water heater because uh, otherwise I've got to go back and readjust the sink. Wow. Uh, I use stress coat and Amcoil. Uh, probably to get by with one or the other. I could probably get by with the cheap one, drop per gallon stuff, but it just as a precaution. Uh, I use both. Uh, it costs a little bit more. But you figure water change, I may use a buck worth of chemicals instead of a dime. But like, how many fish do you have to kill to save yeah, 90 it. cents? Yeah, like the prime, double dose. Yeah. If you feel like doing it, because that you're killing your fish. And so. I treat the whole the full volume of the tank. So if I'm doing a uh, 150 gallon tank, if I do a 75 gallon water change, I'll treat for 150 ah, gallons okay. uh, of each. So I'm, again, it's overkill, I'm sure, but uh, I don't lose fish when I drink the water. Well, you never know when you're going to have a day where they double down on your chloramines or something. There's, um, the water here has been really consistent. Where I lived nice. before, water was really variable. I would get, uh, I, there were times I found measurable ammonia and measurable nitrite in my tap water. And over there, I would test the tap water before I started doing a water change. Really? And if it was a bad day, I said, sorry boys, we'll, we'll try again in a couple of days. So, uh, but here the water has really been good, so I've been very, very happy with that. And then any uh, any high level like advice like just basic stuff for beginners or people that have been in the hobby just like rules you live by. We talked about water changes. Any other any other just water parting changes, advice? I think it's probably the single most important thing, and I think that's the thing people think is easiest to put off or avoid, and just people don't seem to think that that's as, as necessary. Uh, it bothers me, and I'm not knocking manufacturers necessarily, but you see these products that say, oh, put this in and you don't have to change water. Yes. And it's like, God, please don't say stuff like that. <laughs> uh, and it may be that if you're, you know, you're on vacation and you have to go four weeks instead of two weeks if you want to use that as a crutch to skip one water change, but people who aren't real knowledgeable or devoted to it are going to think, I never have to change water. And it just, that's, uh, it's incredible that that, uh, concept is out there that really really I find concerning for people who don't know better and it's not the people's fault I mean they, they hear advice they want to take this Negative, advice, yeah. and they want the easiest thing they can get and that sure sounds like easy to just squirt a little of this magic elixir in there and uh, you never have to change water mm. well awesome man. well thank you so much for having me over man tank on everybody